That was on. On. Everybody good? That was good. You're. One <laughs> of them, them turned off. Which one turned off? I heard a little. I heard it. Oh, that one. All right. Oh, it turned on. So everybody good? Hey. Jazz, you good? Hey, yeah, we got four counts. <laughs> hey, Tulsa right. Live podcast, baby, most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Before we get into the podcast, shout out to our sponsor, Pure Aesthetics, a versatile medical owned business by a mother and daughter duo in the city of Rancho Cucamonga. They have a range of services that meet the diverse fitness, athletic, aesthetic, wellness, and any wellness needs. They offer services just like testosterone replacement therapy, wellness blood work, IV drips, recovery programs, weight loss assistance, Botox, and fillers, and much more. You got to use a code, a toast for 10% off on your first visit. Make sure you tell them that we sent you. Go check them out either in Rancho Cucamonga or to they have mobile services. So check them out. But shout out to them, Pure Aesthetics, IG, and links below. Now back to the pod. Let's go. Man, well, buenos dias for the people that are listening to it in the morning. And when I started this, if you're listening to this as soon as it drops at 5 p.m. every Monday, we don't miss. Today... I have the lovely Genesis right to my left. Amazing, amazing person. <laughs> About to have a powerful conversation with her. And we got blessed. Shout out Amy for the little alley you from Poder. Shout out her. Uh, we have a wellness coach, a fitness influencer, a very confident person that has a community behind her. Miss Jasmine in the house, baby. Thank you. Woo! That was sweet. That's a nice intro. Thank I you. Like I worked on it for the last hour. <laughs> and be like, hey, scratch that one. You know, that stop everything, redo. Marino. But thank you Latina for Latina wellness coach. Just wanna, Latina just wanna wellness coach. Hands, you have to. She there. she did say she was on Latina time. So, but look, all traffic already. <laughs> I love it. It's giving like New York, you know. She I just came it. back from New York too, so I she's know. on that. She's on that vibra I'm right now. On the East Coast side, <laughs> East Coast West Coast. Uh -huh. All of a sudden. Sorry, I'm. I <laughs> say that. But thank you for for making your time to come out. And about to get into this conversation that I know is going to be very powerful because we've been seeing your content. Amy spoke highly of you and doing our own research. Man, you have a community <laughs> behind you. You're not afraid to express your the way you're feeling, your voice, your 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 transitions in, in your fitness uh, journey. So if you can run it down, where were you born? Where were you raised? Mm, a little emotional. A little emotional today. Um, I was born in Uruguay, by Sandu. Um, born, raised there up until the age of two. And then I migrated to the United States when I was two with my beautiful mommy. Um, and she, she was 19. And we got to the best state in the United States, Alabama. <laughs> yeah, my Latin... Sweet home Alabama. My <laughs> Latin parents... Can we curse on it? I'm not going to curse. But my Latin parents... Latin as hell went to Alabama because they said that's what they saw in the películas. So Alabama? Yeah, they said it was the American dream. That's what they said. That's the first time I've ever heard American Alabama. dream has been Alabama. America. You know, the cowboys and the, ah, the, I don't. Los vaqueros. I don't know. Maybe in Uruguay, the movies were a little older or something. I don't uh -huh. know. But two years old. So up until when did you grow up in Alabama? I was in the South up until the age of about five, and then my parents split, and we went, like, in the middle of the United States. We were in Colorado for a year, and then we finally landed in Jersey slash New York, and I say that because I'm literally 10 minutes away from New York, <laughs> and so we were going back and forth between um, Harrison, New Jersey, Bronx, New York, Newark, New Jersey. So that's like where I was raised. Man. And do you feel like you you brought a, you are now a little bit a part of every every place you lived at? Yeah. I think I care a little. I have a little like Southern, that Southern bell in me. And then I got, you know, a little grittiness of, you know, New York, New Jersey. Attitude. Yeah. I, I, think, attitude. I think attitude is important, especially right. in today's society. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. where if you literally let everybody walk over you, then, you know, your voice becomes silent and mute and nobody hears you. But until you start speaking up, then people don't like it. Mm-hmm. People get offended. New York will do that to you. Let me tell you. <laughs> what was your oh, yeah, baby. It'll make you speak. Everybody was like, you guys are too nice out here. You got to be a little bit more like mean. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. That East Coast versus West Coast culture. Yeah, Super let's, different. I mean, well, you were there this weekend, so your experience of what was like your first initial like culture shock of being on the East Coast? Um, everybody just on the go, like no one, everybody's minding their own business. And honestly, I actually really like that. Like everybody's just on the go, minding their own business, like do what you gotta do type thing. What They're, was your experience? Ooh, ooh. Um, your experience think, in the West Coast? Oh, in the West Coast. Oh, everything's um, number one too slow. I mean, it's, I think it's a blessing and a curse. I think it's cool that you can take a step back and be like, oh, like, you know, because right now I'm in, like, Orange County, Southern California. It's, like, very, like, ooh, we're, like, vibing and, like, maybe I'll go to work. Maybe I won't. I'm surfing. Like, I was, like, what are you guys doing? Like, where, where's my hustle bustle? I'm waking up at 6 a.m., got to get to the gym, got to get to work, got to, like, be the first millionaire in my family type. Like, that's what I was on. And I got here and I was, like, I felt like I was like, who can see the sunrise? Like, you know, like that song, I was like, where am I? Like, um, this is so weird. And there was so much like openness and friendliness. And like in New York, we have a saying about the West Coast. Somebody on the highway, right? They'll get a flat tire. Somebody from the West Coast is like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that happened to you. But um, like, have a nice day and they'll drive off. Somebody from the East Coast is like, oh my God, you're a dumbass here. Let me fix your tire. (laughs) And that's kind of what I experienced when I came out here. It was like yeah. very like everybody's very open and nice, but like, do we really wear the heart on our sleeves? You know, and that's not mm. to like, that's not to say that that's every single experience I've had, but it definitely um, was a shock when it came to um, the realness of life. And like, I guess you struggle with people, you know, where you come from and you see everything in raw realness where like, out here everything's like everybody's kind of like they kind of put a facade on where like everything has to be happy and la vida and everything's great but you don't really see what's going on behind the scenes so you could see the big houses in la hollywood you know you'll be i was in oc you know i'm seeing these huge houses i'm seeing these people living it up best cars best everything but you get behind the scenes and it's like oh this is where the nitty-gritty happens this this is the real stuff you know yeah and that was mm-hmm. like my overall culture shock. That's powerful I, like, that you say that, that people portray a certain image for the acceptance of everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we like just in, in our space, we do social media. It's perfect. Well, there's a time where we're not perfect, where we don't wake up happy or we don't wake up so motivated. Or maybe you just had a bad day. And I feel it now that we're able to express those type of days that it, make, it makes us normal. We see people on social media like, oh, my God, that guy is famous, never has a bad day. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hmm, you sure about that? I feel like social media does that. It dehumanizes people a lot. The comparison. You start comparing. Why is his or her life that way and my life is miserable and unhappy? Or why don't I have that car or that house? And they do. Oh, heck yeah. I think that's how my my social media began. I was like not living in an aesthetic house. My my house at the time when I started social media was built in like, I think, 1901. (laughs) I'm talking, I'm talking, I still had a radiator. I didn't know what central, uh, what was that central AC? AC? I didn't know what that was. I still had, and that thing probably had lead. I think that's illegal now in the United States. But nobody in the hood is checking that. Nobody's yeah. saying, oh, do we want to make sure these people aren't getting poisoned by lead? No. How's their health? We're here with, yeah, we had the little box ACs, you know, and I'm over here like, oh, we got to turn it off for three hours. got to turn it back on. You going like, that's what I was. I did not have an aesthetic household. So yeah. I'm like scrolling on social media. I'm like, dang, they have a nice, you know, white home with that pretty open. girl aesthetic. Yeah. It's like the clean girl aesthetic. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, how am I going to start social media with a rundown house. With my Latina mom bumping music in Facts. the back. And, and like, I, I literally. Recoge la ropa. I, like, mom, un segundo. Like, 30 seconds, please. And I'd be like, and, and at the time, I shared a room with my two younger sisters. I didn't have my own bedroom. So I'm like, 
y'all go in the corner over there and they're watching me like this and i'm over here like in the corner like oh my god here's my haul with like my amazon like little gym clothes and i was like how is this gonna work and that's when the comparison started i was like you know what i'm gonna just i'm just gonna film everything and i was like here i'm I'm battling depression i'm battling you know being low income i'm also latina first generation I migrated here, so I'm not a citizen. I'm, you know, a DACA student. So there's a lot of things that comes with that, right? And that started the whole fitness thing. There's a lack of healthcare resources. There's a lack of gyms built in the hood. There's a lack of so many things. And that began, like, my passion to be like, yeah, I'm depressed. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the rundown house. I'm going to show you crying in my bed. And it was the weirdest thing because I thought, I'm, people are going to be like, what is wrong with this? Why is she crying on social media? This is not the place for that. Yeah. And I, I was like, cringe. I'm going to cry. Yeah, I'm going to be like, I want to get out of bed. And I remember there was this video that like popped off. It was I was in bed and it was like this little motivational speech. And it was like, girl, get up, girl, get up. The enemy has no hold on you. And I'm like, hell yeah. That's Sarah Roberts. Oh, right yeah. There. I know I which one you're her. talking about. I love, I love her. her. And I'm in bed. I'm over here like in bed, like crying, crying, crying. And at the time, you know. I'm working a bartending job. I'm going to community college. I just moved out for the first time. I was renting a room with random people I didn't know. I found on Craigslist. I was like, I want to start my dream here. And Mm. it was in a little studio in that 1901 built house. And I'm like going through life and I'm like, this is miserable. Like this can't be life. This can't be the rest of my life. And that's how I started with social media. I was like, I'm going to show all the not so fun parts. And people were like, oh my God, my house looks like that. I, that's my life. I'm a student. I don't get to do this full time. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, me too, girl. We gonna <laughs> let's get through this together. Let's, let's figure it out together. Let's get through it. And that's how kind of my whole thing started, just by being like, I'm so tired of comparing. Yeah. I'm gonna make it look aesthetic. We, I could buy the furniture. The house might not look cute, but we'll we'll goodwill that. We'll uh, whatever it was. I was finding all these cute little props I could put up in my room and make make it look cute. And I think that's another cool thing about people that don't have everything handed to them. You are able to create like something out of nothing. And you appreciate it a lot more. Yeah. It's just just having something like here, here's a $10,000 couch, you know, it's like going and looking for it or like, we're like, Oh, you know what? I need to save up this much amount of money for it. No, It's so different. The, what you said right now, you decided to show the world the real, the real you. Your day to day, why and how do you do that? Because even now where we're at, people are just so scared to show that, hey, I don't do this full time, or hey, I I have to work this, or hey, I live in a house of three brothers and sisters, and the house may be a mess, and my mom may be yelling at me in the back, que me ponga a lavar o a recoger o lo que sea. But how do you get that confidence to? I'm gonna show it. I think I think it began with wanting to heal. I didn't want to heal for the longest time in my life. And I realized that the root of it was that I didn't know how to prioritize myself. So when you are a Latina woman, first gen woman, any kind of um, woman that is first gen or you have you come from an immigrant background where it's taught that you care for others, you serve others. And so if that means you didn't shower today you don't look pretty you still show up for your family and so that stemming of like wanting to please others and show up for others that's what held me back from social media for a very long time and so I said you know what I'm gonna start putting myself first and so my my outlet for creativity began with social media I was like this is my outlet to yeah I'm, it's not pretty But like we need that because I was so tired of waking up and and I had like this addiction to social media. I was like, I always wanted to be that that Tumblr girl, you know, when that was like popping. I was like, I want to be that like and I'd be like all like aesthetic looking to the side like I wanted that so bad. So I always had that drive to kind of have that creative outlet online and so what like drove me on social media was like if i'm going through this probably the rest of the world is going through this too there's no way everybody has these open like white houses that are so pretty in front of la costa you know like i know the day-to-day person this is what it looks like for them and i was like we need representation we need people doing that and that's how my kind of my journey began with that and then hearing the experiences of other you know, women from 
coming from really rough backgrounds in my area and they're like oh jazz like keep posting or you know be like 50 likes but i'd have like people dming me like and those 10 people i remember was like just the same 10 people like lifting me up like yeah girl keep going like those girls were the ones that were telling me yeah like i gotta share a room with my siblings too yeah my like uncle just got shot out like last week my uncle's getting deported my mom is going through this and i'm like i was kind of that voice in like my community for a long time yeah. um and that's what kept me going and not only that i will say the haters kept me going too because you come from a small town nobody wants to see you get big numbers nobody wants to see you and that's that's right. the other part we need to talk about about our latin community like our people sometimes aren't our biggest supporters they aren't no, sometimes you find the, the biggest support from strangers because you're relatable with them and and i mean we just said this not that long ago where it's like people hate on you because you're growing but they're only hating on you because you came from the same place yet you're doing something that is reaching millions and thousands of people. And how you, what you said, you had 10 people messaging you or 50. You can have 10,000 people, but if you're helping out 100 or one, like your purpose is being served. And now you're being purposeful instead of just doing it just because. Like mm -hmm. we all have a purpose and I encourage everybody to figure that out, whatever it may be, wherever it may be. Maybe you know how to fix cars. Maybe you saved that lady's engine for whatever reason it, it is, but... You, I think one thing that you said right now, too, that I know we can relate to is I didn't want to heal for the longest time. It hurts. We don't want to go through that growing it pain. It hurts a lot. <laughs> so take us through that. Why, what, caused, what caused it hurt and why? What and made what, you switch? What yeah. was that light switch? Okay. Um I think the light switch for me was around 2019. So I was 19 years old. Um, like I said, I it, my day looked the same every day. I mean, you clock in to like bartend, you're dealing with people's burdens. Um, you're going to community college. And I went to a community, a community college in one of like the worst cities in the United States. It was Jersey City. So I'm dealing with the exposure of seeing homeless people, people getting high. I mean, like, it was really intense. And I was like, it's not that bad. People got it worse. And I didn't really know at the time that all this environmental exposure at one point, that's, you know, not that you become that because I was like this, like, little rose in the concrete. And I was like, despite all my environmental, I got to make it out. I got to make it out. I got to make it out. Like I told myself. But it starts affecting you mentally. Yeah. And you're like, you know, you're seeing people and, and it just happens that in, you know, areas like, again, where there's a lack of funding, a lack of Resource. resources, you're going to see more people passing. You're going to see more drug use, more gang violence. It's just going to be there. And when you're around that, you know, but that I'm thankful for in a way, because that's what led me to heal, because when you're around that stuff it kind of I got to a point where like I couldn't take it anymore and I was just like I I don't want to do this anymore like I don't want to wake up and keep seeing this yeah. and um, I got to a point where it got really dark for me and I was hospitalized for my depression for about a week and so when you're in a psych ward with people who are actually um, not okay mentally it does something to you and you're like damn people got it um pretty bad and that um that really um dark place for me is what led me to kind of become who god like created me to be and even in that really 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 dark time of my life um the only thing i could hold on to was like this bible and it took me like five like literally by the time i was leaving the place it was um is when I got my Bible and I was like, I don't know what, like, I don't know wh what I'm thinking. I don't know what is going on. I just need a Bible. Like, yeah. I just, please bring me a Bible. And they hold on to something. And I was just like, let, and, and there was this little Pentecostal woman. Um, if you were raised in Pentecostal churches, you know, they're intense. They're like, mija, ¿por qué harías algo así? ¿Sabes lo que pasa con la gente que hace eso? And I'm like, I'm like, ¿puedo tener una Biblia? Yeah, yo sé, oh my God. Like, I just needed a Bible. And she, she got me a Bible from the chapel because there were only Qurans. And she gave me my Bible, and I was, like, reading through it. And, you know, and the people around me, it was a crazy, like, God worked so crazy in this time 
because all I could think was like, I need to go back to this Psalm. And it's a verse where it says like, even, you know, even though my eyes are so, it was like this Psalm and the Psalmist was really suicidal. And he's like, even though, you know, my eyes are so sore from crying, even though like I'm so burdened that my feet cannot walk. Like, I know you're going to be with me. Like, I know you're going to rescue me. I know you're going to do what you got to do. And I keep, and I kept rereading this. And then so crazy. I was making friends in this little cycle. I was like, you crazy. I'm crazy too. Like, let's go. So I was like, it's like, it's okay. We could be Delulu together. But I was like, obviously um, healing in this time, you know? So people were like gathering around me. And I'm like reading, oh, can you read it out loud? And I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, sure. And I didn't know at the time that like that's a, a form of like God was using me to be a light in a really dark place because don't even get me started on low funding hospitals and psych wards. They basically just put a bunch of homeless people in there and they put people that maybe don't, again, they don't come from the best backgrounds yeah. and they just drug them up. They say, here you go. Don't do it again. Here's some drugs. And they put you back on the street. Yeah, he yeah. was showing you that you were going to be a leader before you even knew you were going to lead a whole I community. I, I really, at the time, I was just like, you need me to read it. Okay, like, I'll read it. Yeah, he'll, and then He'll show you. He'll, he'll give you every single sign for you to believe in him and also believe in yourself. But because we're so stuck in that mindset of, I don't deserve to be happy, you posted something that I want to read to you. And you just did it this week. You're you're not una loca for struggling with mental health issues and pressures. Oh heck yeah, you that's put, so big. I feel like so big in a Hispanic household. I feel like just growing up, I've dealt with that the whole time. Every time I spoke out, it was always like, "You're crazy. You're psycho. Stop being like that." And I'm just like, I'm just expressing you to how I feel. And you're entitled to it. That's the. That's where people think it becomes a problem where it's like, yo, you know what? I may feel this way, but it's I'm entitled to that. I feel this way because it's me. It's not your feelings. You're you're entitled to your own feelings, whether it's right or wrong. It's yours. I'm not telling you my feelings are are right or wrong, but it's just the way I feel. And I need something to help me and to save me because I struggled for so long to find happiness that I even lost. I, I was doing it to myself. I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve to be loved. I don't deserve to, to find the, what, that root of happiness until, how you're saying, God was there the whole time. I just needed to look. Mm -hmm. I needed to look up instead of steady looking down. I was right. I was walking. My vision was just to my, my feet. Um, I don't even want to look up. I'm scared. I'm scared of the healing process because what does it come with? Mm -hmm. It comes with growth and it comes with growing pains, losing people. Other people are not going to like the way you're feeling now or being confident and smiling and be like, why is she so happy? Why is he so happy? Why is he shining? Ooh, that part. You know what I mean? Okay. So you had posted that. And then um, I'm going to read you something that I think it was very, very powerful. And um, actually, Pepe made it easier for me because he sent it to me. Then shout out Pepe for, for doing this. All right. So this is a quote from 2019. Faith is knowing that although life is failing, falling apart, you're not. Faith is knowing that your mental health may be falling apart, but God loves you. In every form and shape, in this phase of my life, I learned that it's not about how hard you fall. It's about the times that you get up. Mm -hmm. You know where I got that from? Where you got that from? Your first post that you have on your Instagram. So good. This is that this is that space. This is that healing space of growth of where you used to be and where you're at now. That's part of it. You know, these tears are, are meant to be shown and, and be out there because mm -hmm. God knows you need to let it out. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's a second part to this. And I think I just need to tell you and read it back to you to remind you. Getting up from bed when your body doesn't want to, want to, getting up after falling and so forth. It's hard. It's a hard month for many of us. If you struggle with depression or are a suicide survivor, you are meant to be here. Your life is a representation of strength, not weakness. Nothing can ever set you apart from the love of God. Don't focus on the failures, but 
on the small on your small victories, things will surely come together, and in the end, you will heal, love again, and succeed with an abundance of blessings by your side. Be patient and loving with yourself. Dang, you, I'm a poet. You are. <laughs> You're a poet. You didn't even I know swear, it. I was a little poet. Man, you were you were helping people years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um. I think it's just so crazy to look back and and I just have so many moments where um, it's just like my tears are a form of gratitude to God because to know that he took me out of a place that I I so badly wanted to succeed and and there were so many reasons why I wanted to succeed you know the pressures um, but more than anything I was like if I pass today let's say like, are people really going to remember that um, I just had all these numbers on Instagram? Or are they going to remember the impact, the way I made them feel? You know, I still have people that um, it happens so much. But I'm so grateful I wasn't a bully in high school. If you were a bully in high school, Shame on you. you need to go back and say sorry to all those people. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful that I was one of those people that just love so hard. You know, when people remember me in high school, they go, Oh, Jazz. Oh, I had this this nickname, and it was called Mother Jazz. I don't know if you guys know Mother Teresa. <laughs> I so badly wanted to be that woman. I, I swear, I thought I was going to be a nun. I didn't know I was going to. It went from nun to lawyer to being a wellness coach. But I so badly wanted to be. I was like, how can I bring back love? I just felt like there was this lack of love, again, in communities that have that lack of resources in like where I grew up you know there's this like you said in New York this very big um front to be hard to like you can't like I did this on my own I did this like that's just hurting I hear hurting when I hear that like you know there was this huge lack of like awareness of love and I was like how can how can I do that in like a gangster way, low key? Like, cause you know, ah. everybody, nobody's gonna be like, oh, I'm like, come here, give me a hug. Like, oh, that's weird. That me it was like, yeah, me like, I'm like, it's all love, it's all love. Like, I, you know, that's all I wanted to do. I was like, how can I just love? Like, and I think that really is the root of like all of our issues in humanity is like, I don't, I don't think there is hate. Like, I think it's just a really big absence of love. You know, and especially, you know, as you're talking about your journey as a Latino man, I think it happens more with like machismo and especially mental health within men. I mean, it's hard for women already, but you see such a huge spike amongst like men's mental health with being able to cry, with being able to look into themselves like there's just this huge lack of awareness in that and that hardness and that toughness. That's all just a front of a really like hurting inner child yeah. and that inner yeah. critic telling you, you're not good enough. Stop, stop crying, be a man. That's yeah. all inner critic stuff. That's all within the subconscious mind. And that's why I really believe in like healing. And, right. and it, it really does take a toll on you. You're, you're going to hurt. You're going to cry. You're going to be irritable. Some days you're going to be really happy some days, but a lot of people, they just have that disassociation. They don't want to connect that yeah. those pieces. Um, let me hit you with the with with the question right away. Okay. Healing depression through movement. Can you elaborate on that? Mm. So whenever somebody experiences depression, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that people experience are they can't get out of bed, mm-hmm. they can't cry, mm-hmm. they feel numb. What does all of that have in common? The commonality of all three, no movement. There's a stagnance, there's a blockage. So if you continue with that blockage and you continue living out on this airplane mode, just stagnant, you just stay that way, yeah. what happens? Your body gets sick and tired. It's like, bro, I'm tired, so I'm going to get depressed. I'm going to get anxious. Yeah. You're not doing what I need you to do so I can heal, bro. So yeah. within all of that and what comes then? Anxiety. You can't sleep. You can't. That's your body's telling you you have a blockage and you're not moving so that's why i'm big on the movement because whether you get up and that does not mean i'm not telling you got to be hitting prs every single day if that means for the next month you just need to get out of your bed put your two feet on the floor and go take a walk around the block 
that's what I need you to do. You got to move. You, you can't, if you already know, putting, staying in this place is keeping you sad, depressed, and you're dealing with so many emotions. Well, what do you think you should do? You should fucking get up and move. Muevete. Muevete. Like, do something. If what you're doing already is keeping you there, change, change your routine. If you know when you're depressed, you're going to stay in that room, be locked up, don't want to talk to nobody, and you know you're still depressed, well, how about you change it? How about you start with it? Isn't that what they call insane when you're doing the same thing over and over, hoping for a different outcome, but you're doing the same Insanity. thing over and over? You know, you're feeding that beast. That's, I'm really big on that on that quote right now. Um, shout out Conejo that had brought it up, but it's just you're feeding the beast. Yeah. When I call the beast, is that you can call it your depression, your anger, your hurt. Your traumas, if you keep feeding it, well, you're st it's still going to be there. Ese lobo va a ganar. El lobo va a ganar. And then what happens? You know, uh, obviously, as everybody knows, like, men have a high rate of, of suicide. Mm -hmm. What happens is we let the, the voices just win because they became too loud and we're too prideful to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. We're too prideful to show anybody that, hey, I'm a little sad today. No me puedo levantar. No estoy bien. I'm not okay. And to express it with your parents, your partner, your friends, so, you know, sometimes you can't. Because there's a, tell me how you guys feel about this. When a man expresses his feelings, do you look at him any lesser or weaker? Or is he more stronger and more powerful because he's expressing it? I would definitely say more stronger and powerful. But I feel like growing up in a very Hispanic household, we're not taught that. We're taught that that's weakness. So it's like, I feel like this generation is slowly getting into that, but the older ones still not getting it. No, I be trying to talk to the older Hispanic, my father, the old heads my are... uncles. My, they go, no, no, mm -mm. I don't agree with that side. New generation stuff. I'm like, that's why you haven't cried in like five years. You gonna mm. get sick off of that. That's why okay? you're still mad. That's a, you know what? And when you're talking about the men's mental health, I think the biggest thing, too, is when I'm referring to the inner critic, I think that the inner critic, the inner critic is super masculine. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be more of like your father figure. And it's like with men, like you said, that voice wins because that's the only one it's feeding. Oh, I, I'm that guy, bro. I did that. Like, I'm going to hit this pier. I'm going to do all the exterior things to yeah. look like a man. But inside your inner child is like screaming to be seen. It's yeah. screaming to be heard. All the guys like throwing little, their little money at the club. That's your inner child that just needs attention, that just yeah. needs a hug. All the men that are like, you know, cracking down on other men or trying to be alpha. Like that's your inner child that just wasn't seen or heard. Yeah. And yes. it's like the more things you do to heal that inner child, the more of a man I think you become that strong, powerful man. Do you think, do you guys think now that women have that masculinity in them because they couldn't find it in men? <laughs> yes, you definitely. Wanna you want to start? <laughs> yes. You go, baby girl. Should I just back yes, up? Yes, I feel yeah, just like <laughs> just you guys saying with the masculine energy, I feel like if guys kind of controlled and were more open about it, it would also bring a girl to their softer era, to their femininity energy. Because if you come at me and you're talking to me like a man, I'm going to have to feel like I have to speak up so you can hear me. Mm. That part. And it brings out my masculine. And I feel like no girl wants to, like, sit in their mm. masculine era because it's tiring. It really so is. Like, it really is. And I feel like just even, like, as a Hispanic, I'm the oldest daughter. We already have mm -hmm. to take care of everybody else. That's already mm -hmm. a masculine energy within itself. Whatever, whatever dream you had, forget about it. You got to take care <laughs> of your little yep. siblings. Your yeah. Ten years mom, old, yeah. you bottle feeding. You already know how to change a baby. Um, mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why is a 10-year-old taking care? I have two younger sisters. So, you know, I think it's beautiful, you know, when you come together, you can speak to your parents about that. Well, open parents, some aren't. But my mom, you know, she apologizes daily. I I'm sorry. I know, I know I messed up. Like, that's enough for me. I'm like, oh, that cured me. I needed that. My, mm. my pride low key needed that a little bit. I was like, I don't want to forgive Your her. Child and my, oh yeah. And, and, and God was like, it doesn't matter whether you, whether your mom says, sorry, you're going to have to forgive her for that. Because I was always angry. Yeah. I was oh, like, yes. I had to be a mother. I had to be walking. And I'm talking on the East coast. You think it's bad being an older sibling here? Talk about rain floods snowstorms you still had to pick up your sibling and we walk we don't got a bus so i'm over here carrying these two 
I'm like, I hate my life. I'm like, this is terrible. And when like, they throw tantrums on you, you're just like, <laughs> I'm like, why am I a mom right now? Yeah. I'm 10. I told the I told Pepe the other day, and I think this applies to anybody that's still mad, right? When you get done wrong to whoever it is for mm. your parents, your relationship, whatever. At that moment, you needed a sorry. You need to hear it. But in reality, now, if you do your internal work, you don't need to hear it no more. It's cool if you hear it, but hey, man, I did my work already. I healed that. Forgiveness is for yourself. Yeah, it's not yes. for everybody else. It's like, I heard this quote, and it was like, um, unforgiveness is like a burning brass. The only person you are hurting is yourself. You're holding on to that. Yeah. You're just burning yourself the whole time. Yeah. And when you let go and you just release it and you give it to God, literally God, you're going to take, because God's vengeance, let me tell you, God's vengeance is mm. way better than your own. You want to go do that person wrong? I'm telling you, God, God let will it do go. let him You do might it. not see it now. I'd be like, damn, they thrive. It. I'm not. I'm bitter. No, God took care of whatever he needed to take care of. He's going to show them yeah. and he's going to, you know, they're going to learn in their way, but that's not your job. Your job is to do your own internal stuff. Wait, you didn't answer about the masculinity. All right. Masculinity. Ooh. I think masculine energy is good for some things. So running a business, you need masculine energy yes. because you will. And I, I, I repeat, you will get stomped on in a male led industry which is business and finance and anything that comes to you wanting to surpass an abundance with your business you walk in you're like hi how are you you know men are gonna be like oh here she comes if you're like hi how are you firm handshake oh okay don't mess with her like she means yeah. business oh, yeah. i think that's amazing and that's where i apply it but now like you said i think i think it really is just a battle because when you're constantly a businesswoman you're thinking business business so how do you man you balance the relationship mm, in a um, relationship? How do you balance the masculinity that you need to run the business? But then how do you tone that down? You have to turn it off. It has to be like a switch. You have mm. to tell yourself, I'm turning it off. Yes. Like I don't need to be very like dominant and try to be seen and hurt. Like turn it off. Like we're at home now. This is a place to relax this is a place to decompress and i think masculinity also comes from survival mode too though when you're constantly in the survival mode of like i gotta provide for myself i gotta be good for everybody i gotta do this and that inner critic that voice yeah. is starting to come out that's for me that's yeah. what masculine energy meant to me survival mode. um yeah that survival mode so you gotta does, switch it does off does that also come with your partner giving you that reassurance mm -hmm. that it's okay to turn it off Oh, yeah. Like whenever you are with your partner, um, you have to really, really make sure that you are looking for a man that doesn't just claim he's masculine and he has all these external things. But what is he doing behind the, the screens to do his own inner work? Because one thing that's not fair is if you're doing your inner work and your partner's not. Yes. It's a waste of time. So you want to make sure that if you're going to get into you know, your feminine energy, you're not just sub being submissive and submitting to a man who's doing no inner work. So nice. your, your, your soul, your gut, all the gut feeling is real. That it's like, feeling? it's real that, you know, that woman's intuition, it will tell you when you're sound and secure. If you're constantly anxious, I got butter. That ain't butterflies. That's anxiety. You need to run. Um, that's that's not healthy. You always constantly having butterflies. That's that's like a myth. You you shouldn't be you should be at peace. You should feel I feel sound. I feel yeah. secure. I feel good with this person. Not like oh I'm so anxious. I'm so mm, I can't check my phone. I gotta look at him the whole time. Like there's two different things. You have to find that balance of peace and security. But everybody has that intuition. You gotta listen to it. And when you start ignoring it, that's the problem. What's the f what's for you guys? What is that first thing you think about or go through when getting getting into a relationship? Mm. You have to, you you can't be bouncing around in relationships. I think I really had this issue for a long time. I never took a break from like the ages of like 19 to 21. I was like back to back to back. I probably took like a couple weeks 
and I was back with some. Yeah, it was bad. I had dependency issues. I was looking for a father in men. And that comes with the healing process. A lot of people do not want to be alone for a long time and heal. They want to say, oh, but I want to heal with that. It doesn't work that way. Have someone else heal you. Yeah, like you can like heal with your your partner. Like that'll come, but that should not be your core of your healing journey. That's a problem. Yeah, we feel like we need that person in order. Like if he's going or she's going through something, I'm going to. Fuck, we can heal together. No. no. Uh-uh. Handle your own stuff. Red flag, red flag. <laughs> Handle your own stuff real quick. Yeah. You know, how how can you give that person happiness when you're not even happy? Or how can you show them love when at the end of the day you don't even love yourself? What are you giving them? It's a reflection. Mm. Like, I, I always say that. And my number one thing is don't start dating a person until you've seen them in all oh, of their, nice. in all of the areas. Mm. When they're angry, how are they? When they're grieving, how are they? When they get something thrown at them that is just so crazy, how do they react? Do they do they crush under pressure? That's ooh, Ooh. you better run. Because if they crush under pressure, they're gonna crush in every other area. Like if I'm applying pressure to you, I'm putting more you better be a bigger man. Like you better like, okay, I can handle I I I gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta be, you know? But that also goes back to the masculine energy. If you're constantly in your masculine energy, oh, I gotta handle it because my man can't handle it. I gotta do that. That's a problem. Yes. So you have to see them in all areas when they grieve, when they're angry, especially when they're angry. And the minute there's disrespect, I always say the relationship is fleeting. There's just no room for it's, that. There's no going back. No, it's like one one time is enough for you to be like, okay, because we, sometimes we say things when we're upset. Mm-hmm. But the minute there's disrespect, now it's like me versus you and not us versus the Problems. problem. Like, Ooh. and it's happened multiple times. Now we got to we gotta have a conversation. That part. When there's a problem, how do we handle it? Is mm-hmm. it me and you against the problem or is it me against the problem and you mm-hmm. or vice versa? Or is everybody against me and no matter what you say, you're wrong. It's like, nah, man. Like at the same time, it's like, all right, how can we both communicate, right? Communication is a big part. You're not always going to be understanding of what's going on, but you can at least comprehend it. Like, okay, cool. That's how you feel. All right, cool. And how does, you said that you turn to God, right? Was that just you since you grew up with God or is it something that you had found in that dark place? Um, I, at the age of, at the age of 10, yeah, I was 10 years old when I accepted Jesus. And I never had my mom tell me, like, you need to come to church with me. My mom had her own experience where she found God in the midst of her pregnancy. She um, was supposed to die from labor. And, like, God literally, like, delivered her, broke our generational because that had actually been a thing in our family oh. where women were, um, they passed away somehow from like child labor or mental health. Um, and she was like the first winner in her family to like break that chain. And oh. through her own experience and like revelation and miraculous, like divine nature, like she was just like, Oh, like I'm going to this thing called church. And I was like, okay and they had you know youth nights they would make it look good they'd have like glow in the dark (laughs) sticks and they'd be like oh we playing like you know they'd be doing remixes like uh what is it like party in the house what is it we gonna have a good i don't remember the song i'm over here singing but they'd be doing like remixes to like worldly songs like Mm -hmm. you know like oh like you remember the cha-cha slide like they would do like oh holy spirit woo (laughs) one two three and i'd be like this is a vibe like i like this and then there was this song um and it was called like he he's jealous for me and he loves like a hurricane i'm a tree bending beneath the weight of his um winter mercy and i was like oh i like that and i've always been a very depthful like um intuitive child and i was like oh and i had um an absence of a father figure So I was like, oh, my God, God loves me that much. And, like, I accepted Christ, and he started using me from, like, a really early age. I was, like, we had a minivan, and I'd, like, get all the kids from school. And, like, I'd be, like, oh, I I tell my mom, oh, like, let's go take all the kids to to church. And, like, I'd be the person, like, filling kids up. Like, youth leaders love me. I'd be bringing bringing the kids. (laughs) So I've always, like, loved church. Let's go. (laughs) Yeah, like. Get the party (laughs) bus. Run this. Yeah, like, I always. I don't know. I had this, um, like I said, love. 
I never really looked at God like he's got these rules and I'm going to hell. I never looked at him like that. I was just like, he's so loving and love can change people. Ooh. And Jesus and God is love. So people, love they change. love that. And they were like, oh, here's this Christian girl. She doesn't care if I'm gay. She doesn't care if I did this. Oh, I like her. I'm going to go to church because she represents. And that's what I say. Sometimes you are going to be the first bible somebody reads you're gonna be the first church that somebody steps foot nice. into i've met people that will never step foot into a church i've met people that maybe will never open the bible but through me they see the love of god mm -hmm. and through that that's where they can experience some just a little bit of what god can do for them you know yeah because when when does everybody and it's it's hard to say and then I'm, I'm guilty of it too but when's the first sign that we turn to god when something, <laughs> something's wrong something's wrong <laughs> Something bad yeah. happens when you hit rock yeah. bottom. Yeah, but why, instead of saying "Why me?" Why turn it into "Thank you for putting me through this." Mm -hmm. Now I get to build a shield of me going through this this event, and now if it ever comes again, I know you got me. Mm -hmm. Everybody left me but him. Mm -hmm. What else do I have? Well, I got him. I got everything I ever need. I don't need nobody else, right? As much as we want to, we want to get love from everybody. But when you're walking alone, who was there? Nobody. When you were depressed, who was there? Nobody. When you were mad at the world, who the fuck was there? Ain't nobody. But God was. And he never left you. And you got to remember that. And it comes at times. Like, again, I'm this person because I had to go through my own stuff. But it comes at my own time. Not because you told me or you told me or he or him. I had to do it myself. It's but I had, divine I had to be ready. Uh, switching gears here. And that same post that you did this week, it says... You don't have to achieve el sueño de tus, de tus padres to be successful. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about mm -hmm. this. Talk to, again, the, in migrating to the United oh, States, yeah. there's a big American dream that everybody portrays. I want to know. I want to talk to the person that told our parents that America had all this, this American dream thing. I want to look at that person because we need to have a serious discussion. Because you're that. you're why you looking too bad right now. <laughs> I, I you know I when my parents came out here you know they had a vision. My mom she always says I just knew that the small town in Uruguay it just couldn't hold your dreams, Mika. And I think that's so beautiful. I I love my mother. But um, when it comes to like the sueño de tus padres and like viviendo um, el sueño que tienen para ti. Um, Within that sentence, there's already an issue. It's el sueño de ellos. No es el sueño tuyo. So it's not, it's not your dream, it's their dream. Mm. And there's already, like, a big issue there. So what ends up happening is there's this thing called collectivism, collectivism and individualism, right? In the United States, we're really big on individualism. You get to buy your house. You get to buy your car. You get to live your dream. In our countries, it's not like that. It's... We all gather, yeah. and based on our community, we take care of all the kids. So, you know, Doña Rosa from down the street saw you were doing drugs. Oh, your mama's going to know because the whole community is raising you up, right? Or I got in trouble a lot. <laughs> your daughter outside in the street with some boy right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, girl, I know that. I know. Oh, I saw her in the little corner near the bush of um, Hamilton Street, and she was up with a boy. And I'm like, I, Mom, I don't know. I think she's seen I don't things. Know who she's that old. Man is. I don't. Mm -mm. So you have the whole community kind of it's it's collectivism, right? So based on your community, you <laughs> do you want to say something? It's because like there's there's two sides. There's a growing the raising part of it, but there's also those parents that hey, tu hijo hija son son malos, pero mi hija hijo son muy buenos. Yeah, mira, acá mira. Like, hey, you don't know that they just snuck out of the fucking house. And no, they're just, party, you know? <laughs> they're just a better liar. They're not. They're not better kids. They just haven't gotten caught. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. I don't know. If you were that kid, you're you're amazing. I always I I didn't really have that blessing. You're a bad life. I'm I'm a I'm a terrible Dude, I got caught all the time. All the time. I can't I lie. I can't I lie. I feel from guilty. Life. <laughs> if y'all need me to testify, just don't. Don't <laughs> even <laughs> look. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't be lying. I don't lie. I just bend the truth. <laughs> it's, it's all about perspective. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing they taught no. us in pre law. It's it's not a lie. It's just the perspective. The perspective. That's it. That. What but, it. But like in a narcissistic way, what do they say? Like, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to hurt you. 
hurt I'm me. Not gaslighting them back. Hurt no, me. not it's a gaslighting for me. Uh, uh-uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But back to the swing yells. <laughs> back to the swing yells. Me <laughs> that. When, you know, when I migrated here, you know, we all have our parents like, I want you to be, it's either you're a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. And if you don't choose those two, you're all right. You know, like you made it out. You have a, somewhat of a career, but they want you like top notch, like immigrant parents sit in a table. My kid's a doctor, man. My kid's what marketing agency. Cool. Mine's still a doctor. You know, they're going back to like the doctor lawyer thing. Yeah. What they don't realize is what it takes to get there. So. Our parents are already living paycheck to paycheck. You can't pay for my school. I got to depend from the state. Mind you, DACA students do not get funding from the government. So you are only um, funded by the state. The state is only limited to so much funding. So how many of us can actually, I mean, it's literally a tiny little, like, you really got to push through and maybe you're the 1% that will make it. There's not too many DACA people that are doing it. And I was with this dream of, I'm going to be a lawyer. And so I worked through community college. You know, I'm I'm really busting, uh, like, my ass to get there. I'm like, I'm going to have the 4.0. I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to do this. But it was all based on my parents. I got to make my parents proud. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just worked a bartending shift, and I got school at 8 a.m. Doesn't matter. Got to, like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do it for them. But I lived for them for so long, I, I forgot my own purpose. What do mm-hmm. I like? Mm-hmm. What? Why am I living every day? Why am I waking up? Right. I hated it. I was very good at school. I love school, but why? Because, and this happens with a lot of first gen Latinos, yeah. our, um, like who we are is all dependent on our progress yeah. and it's all mm-hmm. dependent on our wins. Nice. You get good grades. You're a good person. You get bad grades. You're a bad person. So what happens? Performance equals who you are. So you perform badly. You're a bad person. You don't show up to work. You're lazy. There's no, it's just like one or the other. Yeah. There's no middle ground. Oh, maybe he's really depressed. Maybe we, we should look into that. Maybe we should take care of you and kind of build you up. No, it's mijo, ponte las pilas, levántate, get up. And it's like, damn, bro, like, I don't, you know. And so when you're in that constant survival mode of one or the other, you're like, oh, I didn't get good grades. I'm lazy. I'm the worst person in the world. Or, you know, you don't show up to work. You're lazy. Yeah. So you can't, you know, when it's it comes one to. one or the other. Yeah, so el sueño can't, you, that can't be your driving factor for the rest of your life. You need to find that within your own purpose, what drives you. Uh, for both of you, what was that moment where you were able to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I'm proud? That's hard. <laughs> I'll let you go first. You want to go first? <laughs> you want to go first? Let's I'm feel a little proud. Hot. I think when like you were able, like you saw yourself in the mirror and you're like, wow, I fucking did it. I'm proud of who I am or what I did. Oh, and um, when I moved into my first apartment by myself out here, I literally, I came to California like with 200 bucks and I was like renting a room and I was like in this space and I'm like, I just got to make it out. I got to do what I got to do. And when I finally, like in three months, I just, I would post every single day, started getting the sponsorships. I was like, I want to start something bigger than me. And I started Fuerte. And I was like, okay, we're going to do it. And as soon as I moved, like, as soon as I got my first payout, I got an apartment. And when I, like, I was sitting in this apartment, the sun was going down. It was so, like, cinematic. I think I have it on my Instagram, actually. I was like, I got to put the tripod up. I'm, like, sitting here, like, building my bed, masculine energy. So I'm, like, sitting my bed. I'm sitting there, like, making my bed. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm sitting in my apartment. Like, I did it. Like, lo hice. Like, this was worth it. Yeah. And that's definitely probably my biggest, like, achievement. Being able to sit there and, like, and I, I had just rescued a dog. It was me and her. I was like, we're going to have to grind this one out. I was like, we're going to have to do this. So that was probably my proudest. Like, I sat there with her. I'm like, we're going to make it out, me and you. So I, what that's probably my. Name? Her name's Dina. Dina. She's, a, she's a pity. Yeah. Uh, she's That cinematic. We're literally, we're her. looking at each other. And she's like, she's probably thinking. This is better than the pound. I'm like, no, we're going to have it better, baby. We go. And I'm just building the bed. And and I'm just sitting in, like, this gratitude and just, like, just crying to God. I'm just like, yo, like, I really, like, this happened. Because, like, I my prayers and my hard work, it went somewhere. Yeah. And here we are. You okay. know? You? Have you had that moment? I would honestly say this past weekend, um, from my 24th, we went to New York, me and my best friend. Mm-hmm. And it was just a so surreal moment. Because I've known her since I was 13, so 10-year different, like 10-year friendship, right? Uh, yeah. We both grew up in a very Hispanic household. And talking about the sueño, um, 
my parents took us to dinner for my birthday and I was asking him his I was like is this all you want like you don't want to travel you don't want to he's like mija my sueño was buying my house mm. that was it I'm happy here I'm just like for you you lived your sueño and after I'm, I'm able to live mine by like traveling that's what I want to do you know yeah. and that was my moment where I was like us at 13 would never saw us in New York 10 years later and like to be able to do that, that was such a moment, you know, like we're both growing. I'm in the medical field. She was, um, she has her own business. And it's just like, wow, like we came so far from like these little girls from La Puente. Oh, I <laughs> like, love that. You know, like we've never thought. Shout out La Puente. Shout out La Puente. <laughs> well, we That's August. my little hood. <laughs> I love it. When you get mad, do you speak in Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. Or like the New York comes out. Oh. I'm like, no, like don't talk to me. Like customer service? <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a customer service rep and you've got me um, when I'm like not in a good mood. I'm I mean, like, I want to hear that. In what, New if, York what if they you? tell you, sorry, miss, we can't help you today. Like, what do you mean you can't help me? We just can't. Like, what do you mean? Call back later at a better time. At a better. <laughs> you know what? Off the camera. Are the cameras wrong? <laughs> She's getting real right. Like, what? I'm like, like, no. <laughs> start calling them by their name. What's your name, miss? Oh, uh, okay. Estrella. Let me tell you something right now. Oh, the, the cameras are rolling. <laughs> She's like, I can't show I'm that like, side. Oh, I can't so show that what side. is the camera's going to turn off? <laughs> no, I'll be like, like, I just, it comes out. Like, I just get so upset when it's like very unjust. Like uh, our Hispanic parents, they call you by your full name? Hasmin Margalefi Soli. Like, that's my full. Yeah. I have two last names. When your mom gets mad, you come with the Yeah, Hasmin. That's my name. It's not Jasmine. It's Hasmin. It's Hasmin. We do the intro real quick, everybody. <laughs> Replay it. <laughs> Replay it real quick. Hasmin. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are the cameras still rolling? Yeah. Yeah, it's Hasmin. It's not, well, I say jazz, but it would be has. Has. Now, if you didn't know, now you know. Yeah, let's talk about that, like the whole accent thing, like in like, you know, elementary, high school, like you have mm. to use the Americanized vert. That would like upset me. I'd be like, no, there's a little, because my mom, she made sure she said, everybody's going to know you are Latin. So she put a little, she put a little um, accent mark on the I. So she said, they're going to know it's has, nope. They go Jasmine Margalef or Margalef or Margaleft. They love that. Um, but no, it's I used has to get me. so offended where they, they would say, is Luis here? It's Luis. It's Luis. <laughs> Luis. Thank you. Oh, Verdu Verdusco. Thank you. Okay. I was like, damn, like, look damn, at my skin, Verdusco? Bro. Verdusco. No, Verdusco. Yeah, cut, this. cut this off. <laughs> Verdusco. Turn off the cameras now. That's a Hispanic ass name. Verdusco. Not nah, my dad, Jose Luis Verdusco Garcia. Oh, the Garcia. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I told you earlier. Yeah. Like, and the, the Garcia. Garcia. Dang. <laughs> You wanted to ask her something. Oh, yeah. So you started a movement, the Puerto movement, right? Mm -hmm. So can you please explain to us what's your 555? Ooh. Oh, that's good. You did your research. I did. I was saying. <laughs> High five. Then I have a question can, for you. Yeah. She can say. Um, <laughs> she can say. Um, so, so Fuerte movement, I started as Fuerte fitness. And then I was like, fitness is so shallow. Like, what is fitness? Like, people think lift. So I'm Gym like, rats. I want to like, yeah, like, I'm like, I want something Chicken and more. rice all day. No, Tara, that's going to be another podcast. We're going to talk about gut health and mental health. Write that one down. He's a trainer, um, that's why. Gut health, so important. Second brain. But, um, Fuerte 55. So I was like, what's something that really like, it like encapsulates everything. And I was like, it's the movement. It's like the woman that it's the day to day person. It's the mom who has to like clock in for her kids. It's a student that has to like get to school. It's it's the woman that I was. I was the one going to community college and I was the one that was trying to meal prep and trying to freaking balance my whole life. I'm like I'm still that woman. And obviously we we elevate, we grow and we shed layers. But that will always be me at the core the one that didn't feel seen and heard and I had to start this platform. So that's what Fuerte movement entails. Actually, there's going to be a reel. It's going to say, what is Fuerte? Yeah. So you'll see there, what does Fuerte mean to me? Um, and so Fuerte is a day-to-day -day person. You don't have to be a superwoman. You don't have to be hitting 300-pound deadlifts. No. You showing up to me, Fuerte is somebody that still shows up when everything in their life is not showing up for them. And so that's Fuerte movement. Fuerte 55 was a concept I created based on like a holistic approach to grounding. So parasympathetic, 
parasympathetic activity right in the brain. So a lot of us, especially in Hispanic households, first thing we do, we're blasting salsa and cleaning. That is a terrible way to wake up in the morning. Sorry, mom. So what happens is when you wake up in the morning and you tell your brain, I have to do a task, your uh, your cortisol levels, stress levels, they heighten. And now the first thing you're doing is clean, you're doing a task. So you're basing your entire waking up and the process of, you know, your whole gut system, your mental health, your nervous system. It's all based on this task that you have to complete. But the reason why I created Fuerte Five Five is because the average woman does not have an hour to go do a matcha walk like influencers they do, right? Get ready with me. Look at me blow dry my hair. Look at me walk down the beach all my life. Hot girl walk. That is not, baby girl, the hot girl walk. We don't got time. So if I had to be up in school, take the train at 8 a.m., and then I got to get to work for the rest of the day, where is there room for parasympathetic activity to calm myself down and ground myself? Mm -hmm. So five plus five plus five is 15 minutes. It's a 15 minute routine, five minutes of journaling, five minutes of stretching and five minutes of breath work, 15 minutes. You just need those 15 minutes to get your day started. So for moms who have children and they wake them up super early, they can wake up an hour before start their day with eight ounces of water. The first thing you do, you can do your breath work in bed, and that is going to help you set your intention for the day. And anybody can do it, but the goal of it was to make it doable. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you have to do breath work and acupuncture and this and that, because most of the time those resources aren't even available in the hood or in places that lack resources. So me telling you to go do all these holistic practices and doctors, it's more of a if we're being honest, it's more, um, when it comes to finances, it's way more finances. We're talking two to $300 to see a holistic doctor. So what I believe in is preventative work. So if we can prevent you from being in the hospital and having a heart attack because we're getting your body moving and we're calming your stress levels, we're going to do it. But in that 15 minutes, you're basically doing that. And that was the core and root of why i wanted to start that but that's huge on the mindset no like you have to want to start doing this type of routine mm -hmm. instead of like ah, i don't have time so the main the main root of most people's fitness journeys is not is not that they struggle to get to the gym and meal prep it's your mindset yeah. when you have been already wired to think a certain way and yeah. live a certain lifestyle and now you have to tell yourself <laughs> <laughs> The matcha came up. <laughs> I was like, she so, gonna cry. Uh, deep, deep breath. Again, you know? <laughs> deep breath. I won. Um, <laughs> raw and real. We gonna see this. Just Hell running yeah. through. But, right, so, we were talking about, that's the ADHD. What what were we discussing? <laughs> Just get the laugh out. Just get the laugh. No, she's trying to figure out what we're discussing. talking about. The, yeah, the, the <laughs> mindset that we're so programmed already yes. that it has to be this type of routine, right? Like, um, again, for women, it's get up, clean, get everybody else ready, and then go through your day. For men, it's levántate, llega al trabajo temprano, agarra tu lunch. Especially lonche, men. Let me tell you, y'all be, I don't, y'all be waking up, whoo, ready? <laughs> Let's go, gotta go. That, they be waking up straight from bed. In their uniform, they're out, they're out the house. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Every, let's ground. Every Latino like, dad has Hispanic. the pants on the floor next to the bed. So as soon as they get up, they just put Papa, them on. Y el cafecito, oh. first thing in the morning. You should not be drinking coffee first thing on an empty stomach. That's another how, okay, thing. Okay, but how long until you get your first set of caffeine in? You should have a meal and eight ounces of water Damn. before you drink a coffee. My, hey, my guy. And you, I'm I saw you drinking an energy drink. That's terrible for your heart. That's number two already. It? Jesus. Number let two. Me, let me hand my Red Bull real quick. Okay, that's <laughs> hey, a side. We're going to cut what, that one what out. What Drake said? I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Oh, no. But I no, want to be no. here for a long time. Don't get me wrong. I, I want you wrong. to be here for a long Don't time. Don't get me wrong. Get... We'll have a discussion after <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, but damn, coaching. I know. She's like, join in my session. <laughs> the last time I had a coach, Red Bull a.k.a. Jose, I kind of told him off. But I love you, Jose. But I love you. It's okay. We'll work on it. It's okay. I'm patient. Most clients are with me like one to two years. That's how long it really takes. For somebody to change your lifestyle. So all these, listen, I'm all for the programs and four, six week, eight week. Most people, just for them to finally get a routine kicking in on average, we're talking two to three months. Mm. Like just for them to finally get out of their head. Oh. And then we can do the work. And actually, uh, shout out John. Brand new on, on the team. John, I love what's that up? guy. 
he just went through a 35 day challenge, which is his consistency part, right? Because the key for everything to be successful is not do it here and there. It's how consistent can you be, the longevity, how long can you go for, you know, like when you're running on, on the, I'm, I'm going to be very biased right now. When girls are on E on gas, ¿cuánto, how many miles I have? I have 10. I I'll make it. I'll I don't know it. what you're talking about. <laughs> I'll make I don't it. know what you're talking about. That's how I made it in one mile. <laughs> Period. I was it. You know I what? was right there. I was I right know. there. In my head, I was like, "Go home. I can do it in the morning. I'll make it." When she woke, turned it on, doing one mile. Fuck. Am I gonna make it? Yes or no? We don't know. We'll just we'll just thug it out. That's uh, Jesus. Take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. That's take the wheel, said. Jesus. <laughs> but um, it's the it's the consistency when you. I mean, you got to be competitive, right? When if mm. we're in the same industry, the days you don't want to go to work, I gotta go to work, and I'm going to. So that means I'm going to show up even even though I'm not the best today. It's a consistency type of work. So this, um, it took us, what is that? It takes you 10 years to become an overnight success. No one sees that. No one sees how many times we've been posting, how long we've been posting. Oh, you guys are, are famous. Well, shit, we had five views when we started. Mm-hmm. Four of them were from my parents <laughs> and my aunts and my cousins. Those are the 10 people. Yeah. Ten people. That's what I say. You have to start. And I think it's so important when you're talking about everybody sees you when you succeed. Mm. Everybody, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, when you move like to the suburbs, you know, I moved out there. I was like, oh, I'm I'm in a movie right now. This can't be real. You know, when you're used to the community that like I was raised in, I'm like yeah. imposter syndrome. Huge. You feel like you don't fit in. It's like, why am I here? Like, yes. I don't look like everybody else. Yeah. I wasn't raised the same way. My lingo's different. My house looks different because the house is cute. But the inside, I'm going to have the traditional stuff. We're not doing no material. We're going to have all the little, you know, casuelas. We're going to have all the little, there's all actually the, the little tiles. I got the tile, like, it's from like Mexico. It says, like, La reina no cocina. Like, you walk into my house, <laughs> that's what you're seeing automatically. You're going to see all the Hispanic decorations. The, the doll on top of the, the door. Little, <laughs> the little elephant with, like, the tide. Like, it has, like, the little, oh, good luck. Good luck. Um, yeah, so, like, imposter syndrome was, like, so real. I was just like, how do I navigate this weird feeling of looking different? But at the same time, because you're now in a different environment, people are like, oh, she got it. She's good. Like, oh, look. The car, oh, the house, oh, she's doing all right. She's doing fine. But they didn't see what it took to get there. They didn't see the three months of, like, mm. I was working in the gym, like, mm. six days a week. I'm talking, like, at night, everybody's partying, and I'm just closing up the gym. And it was a, it's a big gym, and it's scary. And when that Uber pulls up, I was like, I hope it's not, like, a killer or anything. Like, I'd be, like, jumping in there. I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? You know, like, just 20 minutes of me, like, it's dark. It's like, I got to get home. Like nobody saw those moments or, you know, like most of the time I was pretty embarrassed. I didn't drive. We, we take the train. You saw like yeah. most people take the train. I didn't start driving till New Year's. I got my first car New Year's. I got my license on Christmas. So I literally, yeah, I, I didn't drive my whole life and seeing every adult around me driving. I was like, Bro, what Shit. the heck? Like, it's LA. You have to drive everywhere. Go to Mexico. You see 13 year old kids on, on motorcycles. <laughs> I know. And with their buddy right behind them. Like, yeah. That's not it. This way. Aguas pendejo. Dude, I no. literally tripped out. We're going to, uh, th we're in tequila and we're just like waiting for the intersection. All of a sudden, you see two little kids on a little motorcycle. They be like, hustlers, bro. I'm like, yes. <laughs> they be like, yo, throwing <laughs> like, you throw me the cash, I'll throw you the stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, it's a. Have you been back home? Yeah, like back to Mexico. Mexico? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I went to Guadalajara and Tequila, March. Okay. In March, but uh, before that was probably like two years prior because I I made like when we started the this podcasting and came to LA like I made a commitment to myself of mm -hmm. hey one whole year don't travel nowhere unless it's for this because you need to put everything and everything into this in order for it to succeed. And, I mean, it was just a groundbreaking. We just broke ground at that point. Like, I was like, success? Where the fuck is it? I'm trying to yeah. look for it. And um, now that it, like, gone back, I mean, again, like, appreciative of, of everything. People think Mexico, people think, oh, it's it's very poor. Yeah, there's certain areas. Mm -hmm. But if you stay in Guadalajara, dude, there is people that are balling. There is people yeah. that are business. 
there is people that are literally creating things that are like, dang, you're so far more advanced than us. Like, we went to a mall that shows like four stories, all that outside the architecture was like, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, hell yeah, like that's dope. But again, appreciated of those guys in the little towns that, hey, give me a hundred pesos. And oh, te, te lavo la, el carro ahorita, o las ventanas, or I'll carry your bags or whatever. It's like, bro, you're hustling for five bucks. All the people, all the people that they, I told myself, I was like, if I'm going to hire anybody when God blesses me with the finances, I was like, whoever is cleaning my home, whoever is washing is, is going to be my people. Yeah. And I tell you, those people grind like Hortensia yeah. shout out. she be cleaning my house in two hours. Luis that cleans my car. <laughs> He'll be doing that in 30 minutes. Express wash, baby. And I'm like. Dang, like, our people are such hustlers. Like, that they really are. makes us stand out. We don't make excuses. We show up. And that's what makes us stand apart. But in that grind and hustle, that's where we need that balance of mental health. Most definitely. And one thing to kind of um, put everybody in perspective, our parents are natural-born hustlers. Mm -hmm. Like, that, they had a grind to come out of where they're at. Hey, you, you have an opportunity. Take that same grind and apply it to your life but you have all the resources in order to make something out of it, right? Like if your your dad's a gardener, if your dad is a mechanic, hey, take those resources, help them, but exactly. create something. Mm -hmm. They don't know about business. Some mm -hmm. of them don't know about business. Mm -hmm. They don't know that you can open an LLC. They don't know that hey, I could all pay. Of that. I could get paid for building my backyard. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. That's a write off, baby. That's a write off. You better, everything's you know? a write off. Yeah. So <laughs> that's true. Again, like they they do as yeah. much as they can, but. Us as as their kids that are in right now in our seasons, hey. How can we help them? How can you help, right? That's and my if, dad right now. And how oh, she yeah. said, like, oh, her dad, her, that was his dream. Well, his okay, dream. now it's my time yep. to show him that, hey, you know what? We can become first millionaires. Yeah. Hey, we can become social media famous. We could be those people on TV that they watch every night. Representation. You know, that we yeah. can. That at the end of the day, that all those dreams and aspirations that, thought that they were so far ahead that they weren't unattainable unreachable i don't know we can reach mm -hmm. we just gotta go we just gotta keep walking yeah you know not running all the time not sprinting it's a marathon i just felt walk. that i felt that i right now i like you're talking about like the dad that resonates so much i was like dad like what's going on with llc's he's like eh, taxes i'm like you better be on your taxes you yep. the irs don't play so i'm like you. i'd be i'd be helping him fill out all his stuff i'm like we're gonna do this this way but it's such a blessing like to it be is. able to do that to be like hey like we're gonna do this the right way you want to know yeah. what generational wealth looks like we're gonna build it it's, it's yeah. not Opening about a being, whole new world to them as yeah. well because like you said in the beginning it's so quick be a lawyer be a nurse how many mexican nurses are out there like first daughter trying to be a nurse right here you know and it's yeah, like it's so baby. typical and it's like i'm telling them i tell my sister now because they're trying to push her to be a cop and i'm like there's so much out there that like you can go and see you don't have to go the route our parents know nice. where it's like all the main jobs doctor lawyer paycheck nurse, to paycheck teachers. it's not for everybody no, and it's that's not. okay and like we're just parenting our parents and I think it's beautiful yes. because there's some healing in that, you know, like being able to help my mother when I can, like all of these little different things that I get to do for, you know, my family. I'm like, oh, you want to do this? You can do it, you know, yeah. or we're parenting. Of course, we've always parented our siblings and stuff, but yeah. seeing our parents also their inner child heal, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most rewarding. Yeah. Like when people are like, what? Why do you work so hard? Why do you do what you do? Yeah. It goes back to family. And at the same time, I mean, I know us here, we've all talked about this, where our parents, they give us that, no, no, I got said so. Don't mm -hmm. do that. Don't try that out. No, why? Because they're so afraid that they're gonna of failure. And they don't want their kid, their son or daughter to fail. So it's up to them to, you know, make sure you're safe. But it's like, yo, like, dad, mom, it's okay. I'm going to get up. You taught me everything I possibly yeah. know. Like, I know how to get up. And I know one thing you always taught me was, Nunca te rindas. Mm -hmm. No te quedes abajo. Tú chingale. Pa adelante. Pa adelante. You know, my grandpa, he, he's always told me, nunca para atrás, siempre pa adelante. Pa adelante. I gotta go. So, like, that's the thing. It's like, yo, like, you have all the strength in the world to do it. You just gotta believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Give your power to somebody else that's more powerful than you. And it's not here, in, not here in tangible. It's not tangible. You know, you gotta give it up to faith. Give it to God. You gotta give it to God. You know, I literally told my uncle uh, two weeks ago, 
I was like, for the longest time, I thought I was the most powerful person. I was the person that was always right, never wrong. You know, I got this. I'm, I'm him. I'm him. <laughs> and then I had to really turn and be like, damn, I'm not. There's someone better, better than me, bigger than me that's going to lead me through all the struggles, all the triumphs, all the down moments, the low moments. I learned. And now it's my purpose and my job to, hey, you don't need to follow what I'm doing, but hey, this is what helped me. Why am I smiling? Why am I so confident? This is what helped me. And I mean, Steve Harvey always said, and I'll, I'll, I will always quote him, never be afraid to, to say you pray and never be afraid to, to pray. You know, you, that, that's what saved me. It's what helps me. It's up to you, Hi. however you feel. You know what I mean? But um, there's a, you talk about your mom. And one thing you said at the beginning is her telling you, I'm sorry. Mm. Or how long did you need to hear that from her? And when did you realize that it was okay to forgive? I'm going to be honest, I had a really hard time healing, so I brought it up a lot. Any any argument that we had, I was just like, well, it's because, well, it's because you remember when, and that was my hurt inner child. It was my way of being like, you you know, it wasn't out of malintent, mm -hmm. but that makes your parent feel a type of way. Like, damn, I, I know I messed up. I said I'm sorry. Yeah. Please, like, please forgive me. And in that moment, like, we... You know, I just remember it was like the fifth time I brought it up. I was like, oh, remember this moment? And my mom's like, like she I could hear like I could hear the hurt in her, her voice being like, I said, I'm sorry. And I really meant it. And I want to be better. And that for me was like a breaking point with my therapist. I talked to her about it. Like, I can't okay. seem to to let it go. And now my mother you know, seeing the hurt in her voice and being like, I'm genuinely sorry. Um, sometimes words, they're not going to heal us realistically. And that's where like what you were saying, it's up to you now. You have the power to let go. You have the power to forgive and love again. And so I was very bitter, very um, in my survival mode. I felt like, you know, when our parents don't have the resources to support us, we do have a bit of resentment yeah. because, you know, I'm surrounded by people that are supported by their parents. They're doing very well. And I'm like, why do I have to struggle? Why do I have to be the first? Mm -hmm. Why did my parents do that? And I think all of us have a little bit of that of like, damn, I wish. Mm -hmm. And so I had that like deep down. That was the root of it. It was the 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 hurt of having to do everything on my own. But that's a discussion that I got to have with my mom. Why did you make me so hyper independent? And then through that discussion is where I finally found out why she was the way she was. And that's where I found forgiveness. But sometimes we have to open up conversation for that because some of us are so caught up in, well, you did this. I don't care. You did it. It doesn't matter. But why did your parents do that? Did you ask them how they were raised? And through that, my mom was like, I was raised a certain way. My mother, her mother um, had passed away when she was five, very close to her mother. And she struggled a lot to navigate the world because yeah. her mom was gone. So she said, I made you hyper independent because God forbid something did happen. You would know how to navigate the world. You didn't need me. Mm -hmm. But that caused that disconnection between us. But it was all out of love, like pure mother's love. And that's where I kind of found like my healing through that. Yeah, it's um, it's not the perfect form of love, but it's it was the only way they knew. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like love comes in so many different ways and shapes and forms. Like, again, understanding where and why it comes that way. Like, again, protecting you from, you know, losing her. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I got to let you know that you got to function this way just in case you go through the same thing I went through. It's a fear of failure. It's yeah. a fear of something's going to happen. Yeah. And it's our it's our priority now and our responsibility to fix that yeah. because I mean, I went through a same situation. Me and my dad were going at it. He was calling me psycho and I'm just like, my inner child was just like, love me, you know? And he just, he couldn't like, he couldn't say that. But after I got down my like high horse, my dramaticness. And I was just like, my mom was like, don't be mad at him. I was like, I can't be mad at him because I've done the healing. I've done the work. And I know that's just what he knows. That's what yeah. he grew up in. And I can't be mad at that, but I can break it now. I can break that generation, that generational curse. 
Where, like, when I have my kids and they're telling me something, mm-hmm. I'm going to take a step back and be like, I hear you. I see you. Excellent. And not just be like, oh, you're going through a mood. Oh, that's just your attitude. And it's like, no, well, I like you said, you became hyper independent. Mm-hmm. And it's always like, oh, she got it. She's fine. She got it. You know, and it's like sometimes we don't hear that sorry, but it's like, again, I said, it's our responsibility to fix it now because we're at, at age and we know and we have our resources to fix it now. Sometimes we sometimes we won't hear what we need to hear from anybody else. So it's important for us to tell us what we always wanted to hear, which is that I'm proud of you. So, hey, you're doing good. Good job. Keep going. It's your inner child. You know, you're you inner, don't give him a hug. You know, hug. Literally, hugs solve a lot of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. And again, you feel people's energy from the get go. Can I hug you? Mm-hmm. What kind of energy do I get from there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a, one of those things where, yeah, you know. Sometimes that person needed that hug because now you just healed whatever they're going through. Yep. You know Humanity. I mean? Yeah. Connection. Hug your parents, man. They probably never received enough hugs. And, and if your parent does decline the hug, hug them anyway. Mom, oh, yes. I love you. <laughs> I know. Dad, I love you anyway. <laughs> love you guys. You've done it many times, but I'm still going to hug you. <laughs> um, one question that I got for you. Be honest with yourself right now. <laughs> what is the one thing that keeps you going right now? It's been a rough month, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. September is like mental health awareness month, suicide prevention month. It's it's a rough month. If you do have like seasonal depression, the summer is going. You feel like everything's spiraling. You're like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the number one thing that keeps me going um, is knowing that two things: knowing that I I gotta keep myself going. I, I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm getting like. It's like knowing that I have to keep myself going because that's just how my life has always been. I have to keep going um, because no one's going to do it for me. We're not entitled to anything. You know, we maybe we're not responsible for our traumas and what happened to us, but we're responsible for our healing and we're responsible to show up for ourselves. And so, yeah, I am really disciplined in that way where I tell myself the same way I'm going to tell my clients and my people to get up and show up. I have to do that. Um, and number two my family and my community um knowing that yeah i am i am the rock of my my household i am they have a joke that like i'm alpha even though there's men in my family (laughs) i'm alpha (laughs) i'll be sitting at the table those long tables i'll be sitting right there (laughs) because i i hold my family up i'm the glue to my household and um my family keeps me going family moments my mother my younger siblings um and my community Knowing that there's women that literally through that paragraph while I was writing that, I probably was just in my feels and I wrote it. But the fact that people actually read my things and they're like, you're the reason why I'm going. You're the reason like that's just crazy when I meet people and they tell me that because you don't see the impact online until you meet people and they're telling you their experiences and stories. And it's like I've met women that have gone through some really crazy things. And I'm like, if they're doing it and they're waking up, I got to wake up, too. We're going to wake up together. Oh, yeah. What's that one thing keeping you going? Mm. Oh, we're going already? Yeah. Nah, for oh. real. <laughs> <laughs> y los fuimos. Y los, y los fuimos. Y los fuimos. Yeah, what's that one thing keeping you going right now? Um, Definitely my family. Um, Same situation, 2019, I had a bad depression. And just knowing that, I was low, like you said. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't even shower, you know. like Stop that, baby. It was Mm -hmm. so, I was like, damn, you're Cochino right now. Like, stop, you know? Mm -hmm. But, hey, you know, it happens. Um, Knowing, and in my faith with God, I know that, like, I was in that dark place really bad. Like I said, I couldn't even shower. And God got me out through, like, got me out of it. So now I'm just like, if I can get through that, and Mm -hmm. I progress so much, Mm -hmm. and I see the progress, and I see my friends in my village telling me, I'm so proud of you, you know? Like, I go through a situation, my friends are checking up on me. Hey, I just want to make sure you're good. I'm like... I won't react the same way I did last time, but I'm good. Thank you for checking up. Like, we're growing here, you know? And I think that's what also keeps me going, knowing that I've been through it before and I had no one but God to lean on. So I'm just now, like, now he keeps me going. Like, like I said before, you know, if I have nothing else but God, then that's all I have. That's all you need. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with family, and I feel like sometimes, like, you said you're growing, they start, like, you start doing stuff for you and they start saying, oh, you're selfish or you're doing this or you're doing that. You're not spending much time with us. But it's like, 
hey, you know, but God got me right now. And I'm on, like, he's going to get me through it. I might not be around you guys, but he's going to bless me. And I'm going to start blessing you guys when mm-hmm. the time is coming. Can't help nobody else. What, what, you help yourself. what keeps you going? What keeps me going? My community. Mm-hmm. My people that's standing in this room with me. My two kids. My parents. And myself. Mm-hmm. I depend on me the hell mm-hmm. <laughs> i depend on that me. hyper independence yeah so i depend on me we're gonna get through it there's been a lot of moments where it's i blame the trauma that was happening like why why did god leave me in this moment mm. why did i lose this person why why did this happen or that happen and it's like man that shit was only happening happening to me for me to be stronger for me to help other people and the one thing that that's super important to me right now is like Man, let go, let God. Mm, let go, that let part. God. I cannot control the uncontrollable. Surrender. It's, it's not in my. It's not in my power. It's not in my hands. Whatever is not in my hands that I can change. So it is what it is. Would you say you're a control freak? Oh hell yeah. You're I'm really? a Virgo, yeah. so yeah. I'm a Leo Everything's baby. Perfect. Everything has Scorpio to be perfect. Season, baby, we oh. <laughs> 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 Time to go. Yeah. Um, Cut the cameras. Yeah, because my my biggest thing is. I cannot blame anybody else for the outcome of this Mm -hmm. because I did it. Mm. If you fucked up, now I have a rencor towards you (laughs) because now you're the one that fucked it up. Input, output. Yes. Giggo. Garbage in, garbage out. But here's here's where the maturity is happening. The growth is like, I got to trust them. I got to trust that they can do their job the way I know because now we all have the same amount of passion and like love for it that vision yeah you got you know? a vision you got to have the right people and as around you're you. elevating you're gonna separate mm-hmm. and you're gonna be around the right people yeah. and that's so important your circle defines you like if you're around the wrong people you're not gonna move you're, you're not, gonna not. Go it's not gonna happen i'm sorry i don't know who told you you could grow have the same friends you'll probably like that's amazing you have your girlfriend for 10 years I really can I can't count the amount of friends on my fingers that have probably stuck through for that long. Have one. <laughs> You're gonna. So that's what you need. That's all. You only one, but your circle, like the five people around you, is gonna, they're representatives of who you are. Shit, take so it out to I, friends. I, I like. Eres. Eres. Exactly. Yeah. There's this like uh, I saw this guy talking, and he's like, um, every friend, right? That I say that is my friend. I'm proud to introduce because they yes. reflect a part of myself. And when I started looking at people in my circle that way, I was like, maybe I need to sit down and start um, kind of reflecting. Yeah. And it's also important to have people that you pour into, but you better get poured back into. Back. If you're constantly around that friend, oh, I hate myself. Oh, my God, I'm so fat. Oh, my God, I hate my life. I hate my job. I ha-. Like, girl, what else you're going to hate? You, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. that's where you have to start. Misery loves company. Mm. Misery loves company. Ooh. Put that one on a reel. That one's Damn. good. That, that's the quote that's right it. there. That's the quote. Misery loves shit. company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. And no, it's, it's, it's true. It's so true because when I was depressed, misery loves company. I mm. wouldn't want people to feel bad for me. I want until it was until I was like, what am you I doing? The right people will lift you up. They'll be like, yes. get out of bed, girl. Yes. Get out of like I can tell you, like, I have like this one friend. She'll I'll FaceTime her. I'm like, girl. She's like, girl. She's like, you've been in bed for it's been a minute and 30 seconds. Let's go. Get up. I'm like, I like that. I like friends that are going to put me in my place. Oh, yeah. it's my friend. Friends so that are going to tell me. Change your attitude. We're going to the gym. Let's go. Switch Yo. it. She's like, I feel your energy. She's like, switch it up or I'm dropping you back off. People I was that like, really right, love you will done. tell you the hard truth. Uh-huh. And it's it's in the Bible. It says, uh, faithful are the friends of a... Faithful are the wounds of a friend than kisses from an enemy. Your people... your The people in your life is going to hurt. It's going to hurt because you want to know why. When you're, for example, a wound. If you put salt on a wound... It'll sting. It'll sting. But guess what? It's going to cure whatever needs to happen. But that you need to have the salt. That's why Jesus says we are the salt. Mm -hmm. We are the salt. So your people better be the salt. Because if they're not, if they're just, let's put a little Band-Aid on it. Oh, you're still bleeding. I don't know. You need to recheck your circle. See what's going on. Mandatory. What would you tell your 10-year-old you? She's protected and loved that I will protect her. And I will fight for her because realistically, the the people that should have protected me didn't. And can I do anything about it? No, mm-hmm. I'm 23 now. But what I can do is continue protecting her when I need to set boundaries with people. I'm going to tell you because that's what my inner child needed when, you know, 
you surpass something or you said something out of line, I'm going to protect myself. Yeah. And it's not going to be in a nasty way. I'm going to be firm and I'm going to uphold like my standards of way, like my way of living and what I want for myself. You, you have a quote for the day? You didn't prepare me for that. Ah, you um. always got to be prepared. <laughs> we stay ready. Oy. There's blessing in the redirection. Oh. There's blessing in the redirection. I need because that one God says. will humble you. God will take things away from you. God will even take your own family away from you, mm. you know? But there's always a blessing. There's always a testament. There's always something that will come out of it. I love that. I love that. I yep. think, you know what? I'm going to add to the quote. I got a quote in mind. Go. And not that we're talking about this inner child, inner critic. Um, there's a quote by Frederick Douglass, and it goes, it is far easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. I'm paraphrasing. might be that way. But that's so true. Like, build up the children now so they're not hurting men and women, hurting other people. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. We're, like, building our inner child so we can heal. Man, you know? that's powerful. But Both the blessing them. and the redirection. Rejection is redirection. Yeah. The one I got, I, I, I've been on, a like, on a splurge of like when i get thoughts in my head write them down and it's like kind of like journaling right a guy journaling is like no man I'm like, this <laughs> you know what i mean like I, I, I gotta be honest it's like journaling for a guy that doesn't happen uh, well, your diary, like, no. you may not get a journal but you have notes on your phone it works so i titled it i mean title will work on it later but it, yesterday yesterday life was so great I felt like I was on top of the world, laughing, smiling, and saying to myself, damn, I'm finally happy. I don't know what happened today. I don't know why I'm feeling down, but don't worry. I'll get back up. You owe it to yourself. You'll get back up. Yeah. And it happens. You're not always going to be the happiest ever. You're not going to be always the most motivated ever, but just show up. That's what people don't understand. They're like, well, I'm not motivated to go to the gym. I'm not motivated to show up for my child. I'm not motivated to show up for my friends. It's not about motivation. It's yeah. about disciplining yourself. And it's hard because I was there. I was struggling with hygiene. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like, what is going on with me? And I still have those days. And, and I'm working through it with the therapist because depression, it, it doesn't wait for people. It doesn't say, I'm going to show up only one year of your life. Yeah. It'll show up and it'll bite you in the ass and you better <laughs> get up. Yeah. And that's kind of, it, it's just the way that life works. It's like depression doesn't wait. You know, I started, I started a new hobby and I started surfing. Mira, mira, mira. I said, si, si me voy a mover a California, voy a aprender. Like, I'm going to do it. Not me thinking, I'm like, where are the Latinos at? Where are my Latino surfers? And I get there. We're in, we're in <laughs> and I get there. I love all my white people, but Caucasians everywhere in the ocean. And I'm like. Where's the Latinos at? Like, where's my Mexican surfers? You know, my South American. Hey, we're in the, no we're in the where. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I did pack my sanguichitos. The little, the the little, the little, the <laughs> and I'm like, where am I going to learn to surf? Like, I wanted a Latin instructor. You know, I'm a little biased. So I found this, like, Hawaiian guy on the corner. He, he taught me how to surf. But one thing about surfing that I've learned is the waves don't wait for you. Oh, I got... I've been dragged. I, I'm still struggling to surf, but it's not from one night to the to the next, you know. But he did say the the waves don't wait for you. They will grab you and drag you under. And you're gonna have to get back up, swim back, and you're gonna have to do it all over. I crashed about sixteen to twenty times that day. The first day, I was like, I don't want to surf. This is not. I was like, ooh, quiero estar, ooh, like dancing on my little board. <laughs> take a picture. Take a picture. Da, da, da. <laughs> no, like it didn't work that way. And that's the same way with life. The same with depression. Mm -hmm. The same with showing up. Mm -hmm. Life is going to keep dragging you under. Are you going to get back up and like paddle back and redo it until you finally get? And let me tell you that first wave, when you ride your first wave, it's like a high. You're like, I am like elevated. I am going. And it was one of the best feelings. But mm -hmm. it took about 20 times of crashing. By that time, I was tired. I go, if this ain't the wave, it's just not for me. And I'm telling you, once you paddle back and you get back on, it's kind of like life, you know. So just don't wait for life to show up for you. It's not. You have to get up and you have to do the work. Powerful. This conversation <laughs> was everything and more than even anticipated. Again, being in a room where the energy is just right, where we're all in the 
same frequency where we're just like, yo, we got it. We got to be that voice and we got to let it be known. And we're just, and the podcast is just a superficial thing of our, of our purpose. We're bigger than, than what anybody thinks. And mm-hmm. we're here for a reason. And shout out Amy again for setting this up and letting Thank me you, know. Amy. Thank she, you guys she, for providing she, a sacred space. We had to. It's we, beautiful. We love it. This is great. I've never, this is my first podcast. I don't know what to expect. And the first, but not last. First, but not first last, not baby. Because now we got to get into the gut health, wellness. Yeah, we got to run okay. a, I'll do that. We got to run a part two. Mental health. We got to oh, talk huge. about it. It all comes into the effect. The gut and the mental. Yes. But it is hard mm-hmm. being Mexican and trying to eat healthy. <laughs> we'll talk about, I actually made a post on swaps. On healthy Mexican I seen the, I seen the tapatio one. I was like, I'm gonna have to get that. Sauce. Like te gusta. Yeah, look it up. He made a face. He went, not my tapa. Don't take my tapa, tapatio. I know. And the chamoy, red forty, baby. Nah, nah, nah. We gotta talk about oh, it. Yeah. it That'll be for the next. We'll save it for later. <laughs> Mom, I'll be home in a bit. <laughs> but it's also like podcast, man. Shout out to Kanye Rumbar here in downtown LA for letting us use their space. If you guys want some good vibes, some good music, mm-hmm. some good people, make sure you guys shoot through here in downtown LA. But ladies. Thank you guys for providing a powerful conversation to the team that's sitting here with everybody. Appreciate every single one of you guys. We don't miss. We never miss a Monday. Mm-hmm. It's us a live podcast. We stay going. We keep on moving. Let's go. Woo! Oh, this is. <laughs>